Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I want to get back to you. Um, I did a video last week of when I got my UV resin and my machine from Teresa Salgado, the tinypandora.com website, and um, I didn't have any camera. This is my craft room, my uh, paper room, or whatever you want to call it. And the only camera I had in here was my webcam, so I chose to use that while I played. And as I played, I was recording it, and I started to not even post it because it was such poor quality, but so many of you were so anxious to see, um, you know, the results of the resin, I decided to go ahead and post it and of course all the little gremlins came out and I started getting all this criticism about the poor quality and everything even though I'd already told everybody the quality was bad it didn't seem to matter so I am doing another video and this is not a tutorial this is just me playing with this new resin that I have come to love and I will zoom in a little bit just to show you some of these items. This is one of the, this is the flower that I did. It was just a flower. I had made the cane and made a flower out of it a long time ago. And look, but look at the shine on that. Isn't that pretty? And this was just one coat of little resin. This is my knit piece. Remember we did the faux knitting? And look at the shine on that. Isn't it just gorgeous? I really like this stuff. This was a Natasha bead that I did, oh goodness, when I, probably one of my first tutorials. I'm trying to get it to focus. It just seems to want to focus on my tabletop. But there's my Natasha that I did. And it's got a glass-like shine. As a matter of fact, you can see reflections in it. It's so shiny. Look at that. But there's the shine on this one. And this is a malachite, a faux malachite that I did as one of my Patreon tutorials. And look at the shine on that. Now, I've never been one to want like a shiny, shiny surface. It's just not in my makeup. But I think this is changing my mind. Um, this was a t just something I was playing with with some leftover tiger's eye cane that I had. And look at that. I mean, does that, oh, it just is gorgeous. And this is only with one coat. If I'd put two coats on it. And then again, my bowl. And the ins I only did the inside. I'll do the outside today. And excuse the noise, the wind is just horrible here today. But I've got a few other pieces here that I thought I would try. And let me see. Where, oh, here's the other one. Let me just turn this camera a little bit so you can see the machine. I think I can turn it. But here's the machine here. It's got a pretty big opening. It's got four lights inside. And you can see it's got a very reflective inside because you want to use all of the UV that you can. And it has a slide out shelf which I haven't slid this one out. There, see it slides out. But I'm going to put just a piece of foil in here uh, just because it's easier for me to slide things in and out with the foil. So I'm going to leave that here as, my, as what I'm going to be using. Let me turn my camera back. And then everything else comes in this little box. Uh, you get five cups. And I have four left because I used one. And the bottle, it's one ounce of resin. 
and a brush and there's always a little extra Teresa always throws in a little extra charm or something this time I got an owl charm she's so sweet in the things that she does and then a very nice brush and I haven't taken this brush out but I was told if I keep it in the foil and it's right it, it's still nice and flexible see how flexible it is but it's a really nice brush it doesn't leave brush strokes if you're careful so let's get working here and the first thing I'm going to do is finish my bowl I hadn't done my bowl and I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of resin let me come up so you can see what I'm doing unfortunately with this setup I can't move in I don't believe let me try It's a little bit better but it's still so far away let me come in a little bit further I'll just move my oven up sorry about this but I'm trying to get it to where I can work because this is still about eight inches from the edge of my table but at least I think I can reach it from here so I'm going to pour a little bit of resin in there and I'm going to wipe it off with my brush because I don't want to waste a precious drop of this stuff this stuff is it's just awesome and you want to keep this away from sunlight you want to keep everything that you get so I'm going to just keep keep it in this little box because it's such a nice sturdy little box and it should block the light pretty well because UV does cure with sun with UV light and guess what the Sun is you're right it's UV so let me just paint this on I'm just going to start in the center and come out matter of fact I'm going to hold it and just brush a thin coat now with this one being a bowl I'm not and being as open as it is I'm not being real careful with my brush strokes here now I did notice these black centers to the flowers is Kato clay and I have noticed that this kind of repels the resin but it also repels everything else you try to put on it. Kato clay is and I think maybe that's why I stopped trying to coat my things in order to get it to stick to Kato you have to do so many little things and then when you sand when you sand polymer clay and put a finish on something it looks really nice but if you don't sand it and you just put your glaze over top of raw clay you're going to see every little bump and scratch and dent and everything in there and with this you don't so I'm just going to set that there see how much more space I've got looks like I can get something else small um, I think I'll just put this in here and while this is curing I will cover the rest this is what's so amazing with this it doesn't take any time at all to um, cure most UV that I know of you have to let it cure for like 15 to 20 minutes but I have put things in there well I only done it once but I put some things in there last week and it was probably not in more than five or six minutes and when I took it out it was fully cured so that's another good thing now I'm not putting this on the back I'm going to do the back separate I 
because I don't want to lay it wet down on this foil. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in my oven. I'm going to just turn it on and slide this in. And I'm going to let that sit while I work on the others. Remember this bracelet? I did this bracelet a while back. It was one of those accidents that ended up turning into a pretty cool looking uh, tile. So I went ahead and made a bracelet out of it. And it kind of looks like an animal skin. So I didn't do any sanding or buffing or anything on it because I liked the natural. But I'm going to put some of this on here and just see what it looks like. Now I will tell you that all these things that you see today are things that will be in my D stash when I get them when I get it ready. I'm going to do a D stash and in each package is going to be something that I've made. It may be a finished project, it may just be some beads, it might be a cane that I did that I just haven't done anything with. I love the looks of this. I think Teresa's converting me to a shiny, shiny person. But I'm only putting this on this top edge. I haven't, well I will do one side. And this doesn't hurt you if you get your get it on your hands. You can always take it and just wipe it off with a paper towel. And you'll probably see me do that a couple times. But I'm going to set this on its side. So I think since this one doesn't have as much stuff on it, I'll set it on that side. So I'm going to finish this side with this deep shine brush on UV resin. And then I'll do the other side and maybe the inside after I lay it down. And I have this flower. Do y'all remember this flower? And I ended up ruining it. There's a big dent right here where something got on it. You can see it there. See it right there? But I'm going to do this anyway. But I was trying, to, I was working on a particular type of flower cane, and this is my, another mistake. I love mistakes in polymer clay. I remember when I first started, I was told that there's never mis any mistakes with polymer clay. There's only new opportunities. So that's the way I look at things. When I mess something up, I just do something else with it. but I am really liking this resin. Now how long has that other been in? About five minutes? I should have timed it but I didn't. So when I'm finished with this I'm going to take the other things out and I'm, I bet you anything they're already dry, they're cleared cured, not cleared. I'm looking at thinking how clear this is. But I've still got some left, so I'm going to want to cover something else. So, when you're not using your brush, if you keep it inside of some foil away from the UV light, then it won't get hard and you can use it forever. Let me wipe my hands just to make sure Let me just pull this out just real quick. Yep, it's done. Can you see that? So I'll do the other side of this. And let me see my bowl. Yep, it's all done. This is, it just amazes me 
that this does the way it does. I think some came through one of the holes. It did. So I'm going to set it in this way for a few minutes. But the, it's just like glass or china. It's awesome. So I'm just going to turn it over so that the inside can get cured again. But this one is done. So let me, while I've got my brush out, and since I put my bowl back in, but see, how long was that? Maybe five minutes? This time I'll do this side. Oops, sorry. Again, it's zoomed in, so I'm in, a, I'm in a different place. When I'm in my polymer clay studio, it's much different than when I'm in here. This is an entirely different setup, so it takes a look, it's a little bit different in what you see and what you don't. So, I don't know. I have a box. Let me show you. Actually, I have two boxes. Let me show you this box. Let me zoom out because it's a big box. But look at this box. This is all stuff that I have made and then stuck in a box. So I'm sure there are plenty of things in here. This is one of the my favorite things that I made. And I did not make this with the intention of wearing it. But I ended up wearing it and it broke. So I had to restring it. But this is what I call a color wheel necklace. I started with a yellow, a red, and a blue. And for the yellow, I used gold. And for the red, I used copper. And for the blue, I believe this is cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, I don't remember. But then I started mixing uh, the colors to go around to make it a complete color wheel. So it goes from my yellow, which is gold, and then I started adding the copper to it. And you can see how it turns, you know, it gradually gets darker. So there's my copper, and then I started adding blue to it, so it starts to turn purple, and then blue, and then it starts to turn green, and then back to gold. I love this necklace, and I never wear it. Be well, it, it broke. I wore it at one time and it broke and I restrung it and I'm trying to um, see if this is what I want to do with it. And I made another one which is not strong. It's on a piece of string but it's, it's, it's more like string that you'd use for pearls. It's not what I would use for a bracelet, a necklace. But this was entirely different. This one Again, I used the copper for the red, and the blue, and the gold. But these are things that might end up in my D-stash. You never know. I just, there's all kinds of things. I'd love to see what all's in here. Um, oh, look at this. This is one I did using foil. Can you see that? Using foil. That's something I haven't done. I'll have to do something with some foil. But I thought that was pretty. I was going to turn this into a pen, and I haven't done anything to it. That's my problem. I'm so busy creating tutorials and creating projects, I don't take the time. Now, I'd love to find the head to this. I'm sure she's in here somewhere. I don't see it right now, but this... I'm sure she's in this box. This was my little girl, my little geisha girl, and it's a bottle. It's at, It started out being, it's a bottle of hope. Let me see if I can find her head while I'm waiting for that bowl to cure. I'm sure she's in here somewhere, but I don't see it. But like I say, this is a big box. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. But there are just so many different things in here. But anyway, she has a little head, but it didn't turn out great, so I never did do anything with it. I have these stone beads that I don't have any holes in. 
but these are just buffed and polished but look at those those look like stone uh, this was one of my name tags and the gold broke off it came up here like so it could hang and I had a lanyard kind of put up on there but this was the very first name tag I ever made at my polymer clay guild the Orlando area polymer clay guild here's a little bowl I made just with scraps just actually I might finish this one because I, I need some bowls but there's just so much in here um, here's some faux turquoise that I did, but this has got liquid Kato on it, and I don't know how this would look with the other on it. This is the bracelet I made to match it. See, I never used any metal. This is all polymer clay. This I used silver clay, and then I put a silver mica on it but this was my faux turquoise that I did I did this when I was with the polymer clay guild too there's just so much here's a barrette that I did with the cane that I made just so many things you just can't I'd love for somebody to just come over here and go through this with me now this there's a girl by the name of Mary Lamoray and she has uh, MS, and she is the one of the most talented people in polymer clay I've ever met. And we were sitting at a guild meeting one day, and she told me to grab some scrap clay and just swirl it. This is what it looked like on the other side. Just do some swirls, and then look at the swirl and see what I saw in it, and then you could take a little tool to just kind of trace around it and push it in. So if I'm looking at this, actually right here I think I see a peacock head. But anyway, what I found was this bird. And see what I did is I just pressed down around it to form it and then I just put little feather things in it. But there's my bird and then it's sitting on a branch and that's what I saw in this but that's something else that I did if you ever get a chance to go to the Orlando area polymer clay guild you really need to go this is one of my little men from my nativity set that I was doing and this was what I was working on when I got the inspiration to make my little polymer clay um, nativity necklaces but anyway, I've been talking long enough. I'm sure this is more than cured now, and it is. This is all done. So that's a nice letter opener, which will go back in my box. And my bowl is done. I need little bowls. I'm going to use those for things. So I'm going to put that little bowl there. And let me see if something else will fit on here. It would have to be something small, and I haven't dug out anything small. So I'm going to put this bracelet and this flower in here. And this time I'm going to time it. Let me put it in this way. As long as it's not touching. But I'm going to time it. Uh, according to my Fitbit, it's 2.07. And then so while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to finish this bowl just because it's so cute and I need to use up the rest of this resin. See how far it goes? It wasn't but just a little bit and I've put finishes on several things. But this was done from a circle um, where you take a, let me do the top. You take a circle of clay and then you put uh, canes on it and rub them in and then form them over a light bulb or something that's round and you get all these little ripples but this was a rose cane that I had this was a yellow rose cane that I did 
and some leaves that are tucked in there. These are things, I'm, I'm glad I pulled this out because I have not looked at this box in years. There's so much stuff in here that I, I need to show you and it'll give me maybe some inspiration on some tutorials. If you happen to see anything in here that you particularly like, let me know and I will see about trying a tutorial on that. One of the hardest things for me to do is to figure out what I want to do. I don't, for one thing, I've done so many, I'm beginning to forget the ones that I've done. So that's going to be that. I didn't pull anything else out that would fit in here. Um, I could make, well, I don't want to take these beads off. These are some beads that were done with the static cane. Um, some, some pins, this, is, this doesn't even have the thing in it yet, but this is one that I did that was just a Skinner blend, blue to purple Skinner blend, but I like the texture on that. This one is a little bit smoother. But there's just so many things in, in here. I'd love to go through this entire box with you one day. Actually, this... <laughs> Let me show you this. I don't know. I kind of got off track, didn't I? When I first started with polymer clay, I wanted to make um, desk accessories. I wonder why this has a powder on it. It's been in a plastic bag. It almost looks like like some kind of maybe mildew or something, which I can't imagine on polymer clay. Maybe my bag just wasn't sealed tight and it is dust. But I used these little slight cane slices, the little canes, and then I stuck them on wire. I curled the wire first and then I stuck the canes on them and I put a hole in here. And then I made the pen to match it and it just fit in there like that so it could sit on your desk. See, like this. Maybe I'll do one of these. That would be a cute little project for somebody to do. This was just an extra pen. But I don't even know if these still write. I'm sure they will. I might have to light a match to them. Because they've never been used. I don't know if you know that. That you can light a match. Or uh, I don't, didn't bring my little lighter in here, I don't believe. I have a little lighter that I use for thread and things. But even that, just a little bit of heat to melt the ink in the bottom and it usually gets them going again. They might just be dried up, but I'll give those a try and see. But this is another idea, just a cute little See, this is when I used to craft, when I sold crafts, crafts a la carte. And this was a polymer clay pen set. I think this was like $20, but I never did sell that one. Oh, here's one of Mary's cards. Remember I told you. Well, let me show you. This was an ATC that Mary did. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but can you see that she saw a... Bobcat? What did she say? Each abstract card is a very unique creation. Just as one might search for images in the clouds, I search for images in my clay. Each piece is slowly turned in all directions as I search for that dis beautiful de design just waiting to be discovered. With then, using my tools, I bring the image out with defining lines, textured backgrounds, and a not-too-little imagination. So this is her bobcat. Can you see it? But all you do... Maybe I'll do that as a tutorial one day. There's so many things I could do. I worry about... 
I'm always sitting around going, well, what can I show this week? What can I do this week? Well, this would be a fun one to do. It's similar to the um, Celtic Knot uh, demo that I did a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last month, where you you just you draw your design and then you use your tools. I don't have my clay tools in here, but you would use a tool, tool like this to press down around the edges to define, you know, your design. So that's always something I could do. I might leave some of these things out just to give me some inspiration. Here's a faux bone. And I know you're not watching this to see all the stuff I made. But look at this. Does that look like bone? It's meant to be jagged on the ends. And I think these are Egyptian symbols that I stamped in there. I used to have a lot of Egyptian stamps, but I got rid of those. And I don't know what this is. Looks like an old necklace. I was probably going to use this to string something and, and just never did. But now I have, I have some more crystals, don't I? All right, let me stop. All right. It is now 2.15, so this has been in about eight minutes. And it's done. Oh, man. Look at that. So it went from being very plain <coughs> to being very shiny. So, Teresa, if you're watching this, you have created a monster. Look at that pretty flower. Even with the dent in it, it would be pretty. Here's my dent. I didn't do the back. See, that's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. Just gorgeous. So, I'm going to be doing some more with this resin. And again, I think this is Kato clay. I can see where it's pooling. But you know what I did even with Kato when I was using the liquid clay? I would do one layer. And of course, back then, I was curing it for at least a half an hour. Then I would come back and do another layer. And it would be much easier to do it when I only need you know less than 10 minutes for it to cure. But I'm going to use the rest of this resin on the rest of this bracelet, and then that's going to be it. I'll throw this away. Now, you can probably reuse these. I don't know that it's necessary. You can go to the drugstore, and they're medicine thing. You can get them for children, for cough medicine, and things like that. Let me make sure I'm doing the right side. I do want to make sure that I get this side before I do the back. But um, you can get them at the drugstore, and they're very handy. But if you order the set from Teresa, you get five of them um, with your kit. And let me tell you, I'm, I think I'm a convert. I just stuck my finger in the resin where I didn't used to have shiny things. I think because of all the work you had to do to make it shiny. Could have held it on the outside. Didn't even think about that. It's dry on the outside. But if you have, you can always put multiple coats. Now, like on this one, this one has a few little rough places, but I think if I did another coat on this, it would be very smooth. So, just depends on what you're doing. Um, I just can't get over this flower because I thought it was really kind of ugly, but now that it's shiny, it's kind of pretty. But I could see where I could use another, a second coat on this too. So, maybe I'll just take whatever resin right up around the top. And again, this was Kato Clay. 
So it's going to repel a little bit and hopefully the second coat will stay better. I'll do the top. I don't think I did the center. But I am in love with this. And then at the, when you're finished, all you do is you take your brush. I think I had some on my hands because I got it on the handle. And just wipe it off with your brush. I mean with a paper towel. And then stick it in your foil. And then put your foil in your box. Keep it out of the sunlight and it's going to be ready to go the next time. So Teresa, again, thank you so much. This is just an awesome product. I don't know when I ever would have tried it. Um, you know, my funds are fairly tight and I'm trying to do two different things at once. So uh, as far as paper and uh polymer clay and sometimes it, the time just isn't there or the finances aren't there but um, thank you very much this is an awesome product you guys need to try this it's really something but I believe this is a 36 watt light if I'm not mistaken it's 36 watts let me turn it off. Oh, I can't turn it off because I've got something in there. Okay, that's only been five, five minutes. But um, let's see what's happened in five minutes since we're timing this. Oh, it's done. That was five minutes. You just can't beat it. So I'll put these in for few minutes before I turn the light off and the thing is you don't have to worry about it overheating or bubbling or anything this is just awesome so again I hope you enjoyed watching me play and I, I apologize for the last video it was a disaster I admit it but I had said that in the class in the video that it was going to be bad and still had some negative Nellies, but that's okay. I understand. They were expecting more from me, and I usually expect more from myself. So thanks again, and I will be back soon with another video. Bye-bye.